Hi there, this is Heather of Shutterbug 101. Today we'll be going over the Panasonic FZ80, the half inch sensor bridge camera. Let's get started. The Panasonic FC80 is a half inch, 18 megapixel bridge camera with a 60x zoom comparable to a 20 to 1200 millimeter lens and a variable aperture from 2.8 to 5.9. This camera has 49 focus points, a 3 inch fixed touch LCD screen, and a 4K burst mode allowing you to capture images at 30 frames per second. The FC80 also has 4K video up to 30 frames and Wi-Fi ability to transfer images to a smart device or remote control it with your phone. Today we'll be discussing the doors, buttons, and menus to help you find your way around this camera. Hi guys, so before we get started with this walkthrough, I just want to say thank you to all of my subscribers. I reached a thousand, which is mind-blowing to me. I honestly didn't think I would reach a thousand. <laughs> um, I was just putting videos out to kind of help people out. So those that have subscribed, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Um, it makes me feel like I'm actually making a difference and helping people out with their cameras, which is great. And it's what I love to do is teach people about cameras. You know, so just over a year and I've reached a thousand, it was definitely a lot more than I thought it was gonna be at this point. So I'm gonna keep making videos because as long as you guys keep watching them and you keep telling me that they're helpful, I'll keep making them. So we'll see where we're at in another year. Now what you've been waiting for, let's get started with our walkthrough of the Panasonic FC80. So FC80, um, pretty good little uh, bridge camera that we have here. It has got a lot of zoom and a really small package. Um, on the front of the camera here, you can see that, you know, there's not really any buttons or anything like that. It says some information on the actual lens itself, you know, it's aperture availability, that type of thing. Um, on the top of the lens, that's when you can see that what the zoom uh, ability is, is that 20 to 1200, which is pretty fantastic, which is also a 60 time zoom. Uh, so something to keep in mind. Now this camera does not have uh, built-in stabilization. It has optical stabilization, which, um, you know, is really just going to help you during video, but when you're taking pictures at this long of a zoom range, you'll find that you'll see the shakiness of your camera much more. So do be aware when you get this camera that it's not fantastic if you're going fully handheld, zoomed all the way out, trying to take pictures of birds. You're going to want this on a tripod or steadied on a fence post or something like that if you're going to be zooming that all the way out. So just a little tip there. On the side of the camera here, you see we do have a little door. This door is going to have a couple ports here. It's gonna have our HDMI port um, where you can connect this camera to your television set, to your computer screen, basically any, any external screen to show um, what is typically on your screen of your camera. So you can do a slideshow of pictures from your latest trip. Um, you can um, that way you can hook it up to a television. Nobody's gathering around your camera. You just throw it up on the TV and people can see it. Um, you have your USB port, which is going to charge the battery inside the camera. It does come with that in the box. This is also going to be used for transferring pictures from the camera, uh, to the computer. If you don't have a card reader on the other side of the camera, you'll see that we don't have any doors. This is of course where you're going to put the other um, neck strap, the other side, same as here. You're going to loop them through. Underneath the camera here you have your universal uh, screw mount for your tripod as on every camera. We have a battery door here which is going to hold our battery as well as our SD card which is spring loaded so you want to make sure that you push on that before you take it out. Don't try and pry it out, it's not stuck. We're gonna go to the top of the camera next. Turn that around for you guys. So on this camera, you can see that we have a uh, little speaker here. This is gonna be where you hear your sound from your videos if you decide to play back. This here is going to be your mic. 
Um, this camera does not have an external mic port, so you cannot add a mic to it, so this is really gonna be your only option. This is going to take sound from all around you, so do keep that in mind. Um, right here is the pop-up flash. In order to get the pop-up flash to come up, there's a little flash button here, a little uh, lightning bolt. So if you hit that, that guy is going to pop right up for you. You just put that down when you don't need it. We have our mode dial here. So IA is going to be your intelligent auto. This is going to allow the camera to have all the control. Um, you don't have any control over changing creative options on your camera, so do keep that in mind. The camera is making its best estimation at the best settings for the photo. The P mode is going to be your program mode. This will be your first step off of auto. It'll give you the opportunity to start playing with shutter speed, aperture, ISO, your focus points, your metering, all of these things. And if some of those don't sound familiar, I will attach my playlist of basic photography uh, tips at the end of this video. So you, you know, can check out my metering or focusing video as well as the modes video. The A mode is going to be your aperture priority. This controls the opening in the lens, uh, allows you to get that blurry background sharp foreground, also allows you to let in as much light as possible during low light situations, or accomplish that starburst effect with uh, Christmas lights or the sun peeking through the trees. Um, so you'll pick the opening while the camera will pick the shutter speed. The S is gonna be your shutter priority. This is going to be controlling the speed of the camera, of course. So you'll be able to choose whether you want to show motion or freeze motion while the camera decides what the aperture should be, how much light needs to let in to match that. And then of course you have your manual mode, which you have all the control. The camera's only doing what you tell it to. Um, personally, I would try and stay away from the manual mode, at least right away, if you're just getting into this camera. You know, start playing on the P mode is what I recommend is kind of being your default mode um, because it's still technically automatic, but allows you to have some control and allows you to feel a little bit more comfortable about learning these settings while still getting great pictures. You have your movie mode, which will allow you, of course, to take videos. Now, you don't need to be in this mode to do videos, it's something to keep in mind. You can be in any of these other modes, including the auto mode, and all you have to do is press the red button. Push once to start recording, push again to stop recording. Pretty simple. The uh, movie mode will also allow you to do this, but it also gives you more options in the menu to change uh, vi different video options, like you can see the mic levels on the screen and things like that. The C mode is gonna be your custom mode. The custom mode is if, say, you are a jewelry photographer or you like to take pictures inside a set lit area, like studio lighting, okay, like I have for each of my YouTube videos. Once I find the perfect setting, I can actually save it to the custom menu. So if I go out and I take pictures of another event or if I just wanna take pictures in my front yard, try something new and I come back to take more pictures of my studio set, all I have to do is turn it back to the C mode and it's right where I left it. You have panoramic mode, which will allow you to take pictures from left to right, uh, get you nice wide establishing shots. Try not to go up and down with your camera as you are doing a panoramic because it will not work. You have your scene mode, which is going to be uh, automatic, but it's gonna allow you to be very specific with what you want. So we have clear portrait. We have silky skin. So we have, let's see, we even have like different sceneries like sunset ones, glistening water. Um, one of my favorites here, we have like, you know, image of a flower, food, pets, black and white. You know, you have a bunch of these. So it just, it's automatic mode, but it allows you to go, well, I'm taking a picture of a person or I'm taking a picture of a sunset and I want a different look, okay? The next one here is going to be our painter's palette. This is going to be our creative mode, it allows you to have different filters, if you will. Um, so you have like different like retro, black and white, high key, low key. Um, my favorite little feature in here is actually right here, the one point color. The one point color will allow you to pick one specific color out of your scene 
and it will make the rest of the picture black and white. So this allows you to give um, a little bit of pop to your images, especially if you come across a scene where you have kind of uh, one color in common for a lot of the subjects in the scene. Like at a fire station, typically red is gonna stand out the most. But what you can do is make everything that's not red black and white and really make those reds pop. So you can do all sorts of things in the creative mode as well. And then it's right back to the IA mode. And I'm gonna go over the rest of the camera in the P mode, just because in IA mode, um, it actually limits to what you can see in the menu. So if you are kind of doing a follow along with me in this video to kind of go through your camera, do keep in mind that if you're on IA and not in P when I go over the menu, and you're like, hey, I don't have that in my camera, something must be wrong. Make sure that you're in the P mode when you do that because it should be um, an exact match. Okay, so you also have your zoom here by your shutter button. The shutter button, of course, will allow you to push halfway down to focus so you can hear the beep and then all the way down to take a picture. If you move the lever toward the T for telephoto, okay, that is going to make the barrel actually get much, much longer. You can see there, okay. Um, versus if you move the lever toward the W here, it's actually going to stand for wide angle, giving you the widest angle possible, which is that 20 millimeter mark. Um, you do have a 4K shooting mode here, which is the burst mode. This will allow you to take continuous shots at 30 frames per second, which is pretty incredible. You also have a post focus mode in this camera. Uh, this is something that can be a blessing and a curse if you do uh, turn this on. Um, what the post focus mode does is it takes a picture and allows you to pick where you want it to focus after the fact. When you put the fo post focus mode on on accident though and you don't know what it is, I've had people go on vacation, they've accidentally turned this on and they come home with 200 images and they go, well I can't transfer it to my computer, it won't let me. And that's because the post focus mode when you just take the picture and you don't choose the focus point point yet, it almost is like a video file. So you have to go through the camera, choose the focus point, save it as an image, and then you can save it. So as you can imagine, if you've taken 200 vacation photos, that's going to be an exhausting, <laughs> an exhausting process. So do keep in mind that this does exist. If you do notice that your pictures are taking a little bit longer to take because it takes uh, like three to five pictures at different um, focal lengths. You may want to check to make sure that this is off unless you want to use it. On the back of the camera here, we have our viewfinder, which you'll be able to look through this or the screen, depending on what you want to do there. You can use this or the screen to take your pictures. Some people like the viewfinder better, some people like the screen better. It's all up to you. Um, my biggest thing about this camera is, unfortunately, Usually when you have a viewfinder and a screen on one of these cameras, it has a little sensor. So when you put your face over the sensor, um, this will automatically turn on and turn off the screen for you. However, um, this camera does not have that. So in order to put the viewfinder on, you have to hit the LVF button. That's live viewfinder. When you hit that button, it'll put the picture right into the viewfinder. You hit it again, it'll go right back to the screen. So you do have to hit the button in order to look through the viewfinder or not. Um, we have our autofocus or auto exposure lock. This will allow you to lock in a certain exposure or lighting, um, but it'll also help you to lock autofocus if you would like to do that. We have our adjustment knob here, which will help us in our P, A, and S modes, adjusting aperture or shutter speed. We have our button here, which will control our autofocus, so it'll change it from autofocus, autofocus macro, because this does have um, a sort of macro ability allow you to get a bit closer and also manual focus which as you can see on the lens here there's no turnable ring or anything to manually focus like other cameras so the manual focus on this camera would be a bit tricky the way you're going to do it is with a little lever on screen which I kind of think it's not worth it it's kind of a bummer um, but if you don't find that you're going to use manual focus at all you know it's it's your call the playback button is going to allow you to look at pictures that you've taken and then you can use the directional pad to look forward or backward through the pictures. 
If you would like to delete the pictures, there's a little trash can button here, um, which will allow you to delete pictures that you've taken um, from the playback display. Uh, we do have a display button here. This is going to change the um, appearance of our screen. So we hit this, it's going to be as blank as can be. We have just the information. We have complete black, so no screen at all. Um, and then we have this information here. I personally like to have this information. I know for some it looks a little busy, but I like to be able to see my um, my battery level. I also like to see how many pictures I have left, um, all those type of options there. Um, there's also a quick menu. So this trash can, um, yes, it does throw away pictures in the playback menu, ones that you don't want, but this also doubles as a quick menu. That's why it says Q menu right here. So if we hit this button in shooting mode, it's going to allow us to change all settings on the top and bottom of the screen. So the top here is going to be how it displays color. You probably want to keep it in standard for the most part, but they have vivid color, natural color, monochrome, any of that. Uh, flash setting, so you do, you know, keep in mind that the flash will only fire if you uh, hit the flash button. So you have force flash on, red eye, any of those. You have your movie settings, depending on how many uh, frames you want it to be, if you want it to be 4K or HD. Uh, you have your photo ratio, so uh, 4 by 3 or 3 by 2 is going to be the most common, but you also have 16 by 9 or 1 by 1 for those Instagram shooters. Uh, you have the um, ability to choose between RAW, JPEG, or both, which is great. You have your autofocus modes, so this is how the camera autofocuses. AFS is going to be for autofocus single. This is going to be for when for when you're taking a picture of a single subject that's not moving, a landscape, a person posing, something like that, a flower in your garden, where it's going to focus and lock on. You have AFC, which is autofocus continuous, which allows uh, the camera to autofocus continuously as the subject moves, like wildlife or sports. And then you have AFF, which is autofocus flexible. This is going to allow the camera to choose between AFS and AFC, um, whether it's moving or not. You have your uh, autofocus area of where it's going to autofocus. So you have like where it can focus directly on faces. So if you're taking pictures mainly of your family, friends, um, it's going to be able to focus on their faces first. You have tracking, you have like the entire screen, the whole 49 points, a select area, or even a select point. You have your uh, metering, so you can choose whether to be um, evaluated metering, where it's trying to find a balance through the entire picture, center weighted, where it's mainly just kind of focusing on uh, taking the light from the center, or your spot metering, which allows you to take, say, lighting from over here versus right in the center, um, and off put it to the left or right if you want to get a little bit more creative. Um, then we have our exposure so this allows you to dial up to plus five or minus five. Um, the higher you go in the pluses the brighter your image will be and the lower you go the darker your image will be. So this just kind of helps you um, change that exposure value without changing any major settings. Your ISO setting, which is your image sensitivity. If you're just learning photography I recommend just to keep it in auto for now. Your white balance, which will be the temperature of your photo, more warm, more cool. Auto white balance should be able to figure out what the true white tones will be. You may see that in, in my video here that it actually looks a little bit cooler than it does um, actual white, um, which I believe my camera is in auto white balance. So sometimes that happens. If it does, you can always choose a different option there, whether it's uh, presets like sunny, shady, sh you know, indoors, fluorescence. Um, otherwise, you can choose your own um, in the Kelvin option to make it warmer or cooler. Okay, so you can change all of these things just from your quick menu. And as you can see, um, the camera is very well laid out. So um, you shouldn't have to go really into your actual menu for really anything at all, but we'll still kind of go through it. Um, we do have four last shortcut buttons to go over here um, as well. If you push up, you can change ISO there as well, as well as the quick menu. If you push to the left, you're going to go ahead and get, whoop, 
If you push to the left, you're gonna get your autofocus area. If you push to the right, you're gonna get your white balance. If you push down, this is also a way to get to that 4K burst mode, the, um, the post focus mode, your regular burst mode, and your single shots. You can also get to your timer in this mode as well. And now we're gonna go ahead and get into the actual menu. Now, there may be a few things in the menu itself that I don't go over. Um, and the reason that is, is because uh, there may be things that we've already gone over, from the quick menu to other shortcuts outside the camera, to it may be something that you don't change at all. However, if there is an extra question that you do have about the menu that I don't answer, or I don't take the time to answer, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to explain it to you. You know, it's the whole reason I did this channel was to help people out. So if I'm not answering any questions that you have, please let me know. Uh, so going into the first tab here, this is going to be your shooting tab. So you'll find that a lot of these are in your quick menu. So like that photo style, filter settings, your aspect ratio, the quality. These are all going to be in that quick menu. This is where you can turn bracketing on or off. It's kind of a... Um, exposure sort of testing where the camera will take three to five pictures, um, some a little bit brighter, some a little bit darker, which will allow you to choose the best option later. You have your self timer. Um, if you want to do like highlight shadows, um, the eye dynamic or eye resolution, I would personally keep this off. Multi exposure, time lapse shots, stop motion animation. You can do that in this camera, which is really neat. Um, you can change your shutter option, uh, more options for flash and red eye. Um, there is an ISO limit set, which allows you to pick a limit that the ISO goes up to on auto. I would personally set this camera to a max of 1600. Something to keep in mind. Also, this, uh, this screen is touchscreen, as I said in the beginning, so something to keep in mind there. Um, you know, diffraction compensation. A lot of these are just not going to change. You know, leave it on RGB. Uh, stabilizer. You typically only want to turn that off if it's on a tripod, so do keep that in mind. Um, otherwise, it's great to have handheld. Uh, face recognition, photo styles, filter settings. So yeah, we're back at the beginning. So the video tab is actually going to be almost exact like the exactly like the photos tab is just allowing you to change options for video specifically so the quality the ratio if you want to put a filter on there you know any of that it's pretty much going to be the same thing so keep that in mind uh, we have our custom menu here which will allow us to uh, set custom buttons so this uh, function 3 button, we have our function 2 and function 1 here, which um, they are already set to something, but if you wanted to change them to something else, you absolutely could. Your function buttons are customizable. Uh, you have silent mode. Now keep in mind, when you do turn silent mode on, it does turn a lot of features off. So if you turn this on and all of a sudden some features don't work, like your burst mode, for instance, um, or your flash, uh, you might want to check that and make sure that it is indeed off. Your auto focus or auto exposure lock, if you want to uh, set it for auto exposure, set it for auto focus. Um, you have your shutter auto focus, uh, half press release, definitely keep that off. I've had so many people get frustrated with that. Um, quick auto focus, auto focus assist lamp. You may have noticed a orange light shining here accordingly when I push the shutter button halfway down. That's essentially shining a light out so it's easier for it to focus. Um, direct focus area, auto focus manual focus, uh, manual focus guide. That's really just if you're going to use your manual focus specifically. Peaking which will allow um, the camera to show you where your highlights are really high. Um, your histogram, guidelines if you want kind of the grid set up. Um, we have center marker, your highlights, your zebra pattern. These are all preference. Um, all of the custom mode really is. Um, how you want your display to be through the viewfinder or through the screen. Um, your record area if you want it to display how many pictures you have left versus how much time you have left for video. Auto review. So the photo popping up on the screen after you've taken the shot. Uh, you can change the time limit or turn it off completely. Function button set, so how I was talking about that earlier. 
the zoom lever. Okay, uh, lens position resume. So if say the camera went to sleep or you turned it off while it zoomed out to a certain point, you can turn that on and what it'll do is it'll go right back to where you had it if you wish to do that. Uh, lens retraction, that would be on. So when it senses that you're not busy, it just kind of goes back. Your quick menu, if you want to customize that. Your video button, if you want that to always be on through all the modes. Your touch settings for the screen. And your menu guide, which is this little scroller up here to kind of explain more of what all these options are, which I absolutely love, by the way. And then we have our regular settings here, which will give us like our online manual, setting the clock, our travel date, doing the Wi-Fi connection to your cell phone, uh, give you the live view mode, um, economy mode to save the battery. You have language you know, if you need to reset your settings, which is gonna be right here. So um, a lot of the time, um, if I can't help you over YouTube comments, uh, because I can't physically see your camera, uh, sometimes it gets to the point where we've gone through all the troubleshooting options and it comes down to, well, go ahead and just reset your camera. Now that won't impact your pictures at all. It just resets the settings back to the way that you took it out of the box. So um, if that doesn't fix the problem that you're having, if you accidentally pushed a button and you don't know what it's doing, um, it's a great way to just get back to normal. And if it doesn't, there may be an underlying problem. Um, we have reset Wi-Fi settings, and then we have format here. Formatting is extremely important to know. And the reason that is, is because people will either find out this step on accident, which is pretty awful, or they never learn about it at all. So formatting is going to mean that it's going to permanently erase every picture and piece of data on your card and set it back to the way you purchased it. It's a big old reset button for your SD card alone. Um, the reason that you would want to do this is because when you use the trash can button to delete pictures, um, it essentially deletes the visible picture but saves that data behind it. So if you use the trash can and you never format your card, and you just delete and take a picture, delete and take a picture, delete and take a picture, eventually what happens is corruption happens. And you can either get locked out of your card, your photos will be you know, eaten away one by one. I've seen it happen, it's pretty awful. Um, so formatting your card allows your card to stay nice and healthy. Now you don't have to obsessively do this after every single time you go out and take five pictures. After you've come back from a big vacation, if you're not the type to just put aside the card and go buy a new one, to start over, you wanna make sure that you back up all pictures on the card to a source, whether your computer, an online source, um, an external hard drive, whatever it may be, you make sure they're there, they're off the card, and you put the card back in the camera and you format it. Then you can start over and you have a very low risk of having any issues on your next shoot. And then we have, lastly, our playback menu. This will allow you to do a slideshow. All pictures, this menu is for all your pictures you've already taken. So you can do, you can do some clear retouching, you know, you can add a title, you can do a time-lapse video, edit the time-lapse video or stop motion video in camera. You can resize, you can crop, you can rotate. You can do so much in camera with this. Now, I don't know if I would use all of these. There's some like face record edits, you know, stuff like that, that I'm like, eh, I probably won't use, but hey, it's there. And that's pretty much it. That pretty much sums up this camera. Um, a lot of people tend to overcomplicate, you know, their camera when they get it. They go, I gotta jump right into manual and I gotta go through the menu. I have to know what every single thing is. And it's not necessarily true. Okay, there's no sense in overcomplicating your camera because then you'll never ever use it. It's just too complicated at that point. The fact of the matter is, is that this camera is extremely easy to use. Um, a lot of cameras are fairly easy to use. It's just a matter of taking it step by step and learning at your pace. So if you have any questions whatsoever, if you wanna see a different tips and tricks video I haven't done yet, you wanna see a different camera, let me know in the comments below. I would love to cater to those that want some extra help. And as always, keep your eye out for inspiration, Shutterbugs. Bye.